this is the dive platform that we built. Um, it's pretty substantial. He, here's the ladder. Comes down straight into the water. Now sometimes on ribs you see these yellow containers. Here's one here. These are made by Payne's Wessex. They're the company that make the flares, distress flares, emergency flares that you should carry on your boat. These are often uh, in holders on the A-frame of ribs. So if you see the, you often see two of them on each side um, on, in holders on the A-frame. Um, so we've got one here and like I say I've made, made the bracket for it there and bolted it down to this. And that's, we can keep all our waterproof stuff in there. So we'll keep a flares in there, but we can also keep a spare handheld VHS radio, um, a torch and other stuff like that. We'll keep our, um, our booster pack, our jump pack for the battery in there as well. And mobile phones and things like that. Because uh, you'd be surprised, everything gets incredibly wet on a rib. Even on a nice day, you get spray and all kinds of stuff. Your sandwiches get soggy. It's not, it's not a nice look at all. So it's always nice to have something like that where you can just screw it down, chuck anything in there you want to keep dry. And there it is. I'll just mention as well, the idea of these is that if the boat capsizes or sinks, that these float. So they're designed just to slide out. Uh, and they'll float to the surface, and hopefully you've floated to the surface as well, and you'll have access to it. You can get anything out of it that you might need. Prayer book or whatever. So we've done a lot on the rib this week. Another thing we've done is paint our oars. So we've got some really nice, uh, well, paddles, I think you call them. Um, really nice paddles, which I got from Germany. Uh, they're made of wood, one piece, and they're perfect for this. It didn't come with any. It would have originally, but uh, they were missing. So uh, we got these ones. But originally you might have seen them in some of the scenes where they were natural wood colour. Um, but I've painted them black. I think it looks more commando in black. And it's a nice contrast against the orange. Next project is to secure the auxiliary stroke safety engine, which is this little chap here, this little four horsepower Mercury. He's an extra long shaft, I think they call it a sail, sail mate or something, it's the it's um, yacht version with a long shaft, uh, which is what we need. Reason being, uh, the transom on this rib is only designed for one engine. You can see it dips down here, straight here and then it dips down um, and that's where the main engine is clamped to. There isn't really a facility to put a second engine on here. Sometimes you get you get um, a pair of engines on speedboats or ribs and then the transom would be designed different. It would be straight across so that you had room to, to put them both on. But this is just a single engine transom uh, unfortunately, but beggars can't be choosers. So we've managed to source this. Uh, uh, if you guys that would have seen the previous episode, you would have seen this when we bought this rib. It came with uh, a Johnson uh, twin, it's five or six horsepower, um, as the safety stroke auxiliary engine. Um, we had to uh, get rid of that because it needed a, a fuel tank and the fuel tank for it was underneath the seat now, there was a seat at the back here which we've taken out um, so we haven't really got any anywhere to put the, the tank that, that we needed for that little engine I don't really want it knocking around down here so we swapped it for an outboard that's got a built-in tank we don't actually need a lot of fuel in the tank because um, it's only going to be run for you know 10 minutes or something like that just to get us back in in an emergency back to shore so 
it doesn't need to carry a lot of fuel, but this probably carries, I don't know, about three litres or something like that, four litres maybe. Um, but it's handy, it's, it's compact, it's all in one, so you don't have to mess around with light fuel lines and, and auxiliary fuel tanks. So that's ideal. When we first brought this, the only issue we had with the tubes was we had a slow puncture in this tube here, this section. Um, I fixed that now eventually. It's only a tiny little hole just right underneath though, the bottom underneath of the tube. So I've put a nice round patch on that, so that's done. And that's holding up now, it's not losing any air at all. Plus we've changed the valve on the tube, on the section on the other side. Um, and that's holding as well now. So we've actually got tubes which don't lose any air. You could probably leave these indefinitely and uh, you wouldn't lose any air. Which is great, that's the way you want it. You need reliable tubes as, as much as you need a reliable engine. Right, I'm just going to do a little talk here about this um, dive ladder which we designed and built. Uh, really it was, it was made just to make access it easier to get in, in and out of the boat when we're diving. Now uh, we designed it so that it's not actually, we didn't have to drill any holes in the actual boat so it, you can just lift it off basically un undo some clamps and it will just lift off and you wouldn't have known it was ever there. So Phil designed these really nice clamps here just to fit onto the A-frame. Uh, they just uh, fit on their bottom plates uh, which are tapped. Uh, four stainless steel screws, bolts go straight through there so they clamp it on there and then uh, as an added as an added uh, support, because obviously a uh, big heavy lump like me is climbing up onto this and I weigh just under 250 pounds, um, which is just under 18 stone at the moment. So having all that weight on this, I had this fitted as well, uh, which is just a bar bent over that, it's literally just bent over that, comes down here and it's welded onto the main piece here and this just lifts off all in one piece, really tidy. When we're on the motorway we'll probably take this off, um, it's only held on with a couple of uh, clips there, so we'll probably take the ladder off, put it inside and then when we launch the boat We'll put the ladder up so that all we have to do then is just drop it down into the water. Uh, it's all rusty at the moment, but that's because it is actually new steel. Well, we've taken it out once and it obviously got salt on it, so it's all rusty. Um, as you can see here, where it's shiny, where I've done some alterations to it and, and cleaned it all up so there's no sharp edges. So there's no risk of puncturing our dry suits or our boots. Um, yeah, as soon as I know um, that this is the final design, we'll get it um, galvanised. But until then, there's no point because we're chopping and changing it. But I'm pretty confident this is the final version.